flip the switch off, you can't see anymore. You flip it back on, you can see again. This is what comes to mind when we hear the word light or lighting. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is much more to light than just being able to see. Light isn't just for vision. It touches our lives in so many different ways, and yet we still take it for granted. Perhaps the only time we notice it is when the power goes out and we find ourselves stumbling in the dark, trying to find that flashlight that we can never remember where we put it. I know, I have no idea where mine is. My mother once told me that there are only two certain things in life, death and taxes. Well, I would like to add two, I think, brighter things to that list, sunrises and sunsets. In response to this natural 24-hour light-dark patterns, most pieces on the planet have evolved to have a biological clock that ticks with a period close to 24 hours. Light-dark patterns reaching the back of our eyes sets the timing of our circadian rhythms, which are every rhythm in our body that repeats at approximately every 24 hours, such as the sleep-wake cycle. Daily patterns of light and dark are instrumental to tell all parts of our body to do the right thing at the right time. If given at the wrong time too often, a dose of light, simply light, can lead to diseases. Yet, if given at the right time, light can help you sleep better, perform better, feel less depressed, and even eat less. But not all light is the same to our eyes. Our circadian system is a blue sky detector it's looking for blue light. We need high amounts of light to signal our bodies to be fully awakened. Timing of exposure, it's really important for the circadian system. Light in the biological morning will help you go to bed early. Light in your biological evening will delay the timing of your sleep. In many respects, daylight is an ideal light source for the circadian system. It's on and off at the right time. It has the right color, and it has the right intensity. However, the day we moved in to the built environment and modern society added electric lighting to our lives, we tinkered with the natural patterns of our daily sleep-wake cycle. We're exposed to too little light during the day and too much light in the evening. Unfortunately, that doesn't come without consequences. While we don't know it all, I will give you a few examples as to why it is so important for you to keep track of your light exposure and to expose yourself to the right light at, at the right time. Many of us suffer from jet lag when we fly, say, from New York to Vienna. Uh, when landing in Vienna in the morning after a rough night in these uncomfortable airplane seats, you do know what I'm talking about if you're not flying first class, the first thing we do is we pull up the shades and we look out the window. Don't do it. Light at that time will delay the timing of our biological clock. And in order for us to adjust the Vienna time, we need to advance the timing of our biological clock. So perhaps next time you, you fly to Europe, you might want to consider wearing some of those yellow goggles that remove the short wavelength light from daylight and that may help you adjust the Vienna time a little bit better. If you have trouble getting your teenage kid to go to bed early during school nights, consider turning off those self-luminous displays about a couple of hours prior to the desired bedtimes. Evening light from computer screens and tablets can delay the timing of your sleep. Uh, if you have been touched by Alzheimer's disease patients, you know that one of the problems that may afflict this population is their inability to maintain a consolidated sleep during the nighttime. Dim light, typically found in assisted living facilities in nursing homes, makes matters worse. We and others have shown that exposing Alzheimer's disease patients to high levels of light during the day, similar to daylight, by simply adding fixtures to their rooms, you can help them sleep better and longer at night, reduce feelings of depression, and reduce agitation during the daytime. Many of us who do research use nocturnal animals as animal models for our medical and biomedical research. 
it turns out that mice or nocturnal animals are three to 10,000 times more sensitive to light than humans. The fluorescent tubes that we typically use to illuminate most of the animal facilities around the world do not look bright to us humans, but it's equivalent to exposing a mouse to multiple suns. It makes me wonder how the stressful environment for the animal is affecting most of the results of our medical and biomedical research. Mice should be exposed to low levels of green light, similar to what you're seeing on the screen. My mother was 61 years of age when she died of liver cancer 13 years ago. She survived for eight months from the day she was diagnosed to the day she died. But she never got out of bed after her first chemotherapy session. The side effects of the chemo were horrendous. When my mother was diagnosed, I brought to her oncologist a series of papers about chronotherapy, which shows that the body responds differently to medications given at different times of the day. For example, it's been shown in humans that if given at the right biological time, a drug can be as much as five times more effective at killing cancer cells, and the side effects can be reduced by as much as three times. Light can be used to shift the timing of the biological clock so that cancer patients can get treatments at the right time. My mother's oncologist never changed his practice, perhaps because he never believed that light could be used to help cancer patients manage their treatments better. It is unknown whether the use of light would have changed the outcomes of my mother's disease, but we do note now that light is a very powerful non-pharmacological tool that can help people in many different ways. So how can you harness the power of light to improve your health and well-being? Well, in my view, the first step is for you to start measuring your light exposure and at what time of day you're being exposed to that light. Unfortunately, this is not that easy. Unlike with hunger, we don't have conscious access to our biological clock, and we don't know if we're getting enough light or if we're getting light at the right time. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a device that would count our light energy and it would tell us a prescription as when to get light and to remove light to minimize disruption? Well, using data from the decimeter, a personal sensor that it's calibrated to measure circadian light dark and activity rest patterns over the course of many days, we can develop an app that would interpret that light data from the decimeter, and it would tell us what's the best time to get light to minimize disruption, similar to the calorie count apps that you might already have on your phones. Even though we don't have a conscious access to our biological clock, we do have a blue sky detector in our brains that it's linked to our external environment through our eyes. And light sets the timing of it. Perhaps the time has come for us to stop taking lighting for granted. David Foster Wallace has a story that touches on this team. He talks about this wise, old, whiskery fish that swims up to three young fish and goes, morning, boys, how's the water? And swims away. The three young fish watch him swim away, look at each other and go, What's water? And they swim away. I don't mean to come across as the old white fish here, but I do invite you not to spend the rest of your lives as clueless as the three young fish. We are swimming in an ocean of light. Whether we want it or not, the sun will set tonight, and it will rise again tomorrow. So let's use our imagination, let's stop taking lighting for granted, and let's start using light to improve our health and well-being. Thank you very much.